AC Milan are finally Serie A champions. And on today's show, we're going to try and bring some of that magic to Football Manager. Whenever I do replications, I like to be careful. Everybody has their point of view. And this is my point of view. Naturally, you might see things in a different way. So please let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Now, before we jump into this, we need to do a quick overview and take a look at some of the numbers for AC Milan this season. Understanding the numbers will be important if you seek to you know, do some kind of a replication. AC Milan have been playing a brand of attacking football this season. They've been marginally better than Inter Milan. If you take a look at points per game against the top six, they've had two, which is not a bad number. Inter Milan have been very, very close and it is reflected in the race for the title this season. This is a team that set itself up more often than not in a 4-2-3-1. They can also play the 4-3-3. Looking at the average positions of the team, their fullbacks are usually positioned higher up the pitch. Pioli doesn't have a strike force that can run at 100 miles per hour. He has uh, Giroud and Zlatan. So with that in mind, he's been trying to play to the team's strengths. Their fullbacks are exceptionally hardworking. And the midfield is made up of workhorses in the form of Benetier, Tonali, and Frank Cassie. They play a double pivot with uh, the two central midfielders usually pivoting up into the final third at times. So they have wide players in the form of Liao and Sele Makers. They tend to hold up the ball, allowing for those wingbacks to come barging through the centre. More notably, you'll see Theo Hernandez is usually the more attacking of the two fullbacks. Now, in the game of football manager, you'll also find Calabria. You know, he has hugs line. So he occasionally drifts in and he drifts out. That's the one thing that we have to consider when we're doing this replication. Now, we're looking at the left flank where Theo Hernandez is operating. Now, he tends to drive up the pitch. You know, he's got Rafael Liao out wide and he holds up the ball, lays it off with Theo Hernandez who can just carry on bombing down the center and he provides a lot of uh, threat in the final third. In the middle of the attack, they have an attacking midfielder who sometimes drops deep, providing them with options in terms of the press. Now, Pioli has been influenced by Guardiola and by Klopp, but there are some key differences in the way they play. In terms of final third pressure, they lead the league with more presses done in the area. These numbers are easy to find. All you got to do is go down to fprref.com and you can, you know, extract the numbers for yourself. AC Milan lead the press from the front uh, with Giroud usually dropping deep, providing that kind of pressure. Their defensive line and line of engagement seem to suggest this team tries to play mostly in their opponent's half. But there are teams in Serie A that play with a higher defensive line, notably teams like Atlanta. So if we were going to set their defensive line up in the game, it's probably going to be higher and depending on some of the opponents, much higher. We can't do any kind of replication of AC Milan without considering their keeper, who was brought in as a replacement for Gianluigi Donnarumma, Mike Maignan. I can't really pronounce the name, I hope I got it right. Now, the thing about him as a sweeper keeper is that he initiates quite a few attacks himself. Now, he, if you look at his passing numbers in the league, the majority of his passing numbers seem to be in the medium to the direct range. Now, he does play some short passes. So, if I were to set him up in the game of football manager, there's only one role for him. Sweeper, keeper on attack. Before we finish looking at the numbers, let's talk about goals. Um, they don't have a top scorer in the top 10. For a Serie A champion, that's pretty rare. So, if you're going to replicate this tactic... <laughs> Uh, this is the hardest part of replicating the tactic. We can't have a player scoring more than 20 goals. This is going to be tough, man. Download links for this tactic are in the description of the video below if you want to go check it out. Now, how are we going to set this tactic up? Let's talk about the out of possession instructions first. We're going to play with a higher defensive line with a much higher line of engagement to reflect their press. Then, yes, of course, trigger press is going to be much more often. I'm not going to go around, you know, individually setting up, pressing more for different players. Uh, then we got prevent shot goalkeeper distribution as well with the guys in front. I have been playing this game feverishly over the last 12 hours to try and complete one season so that we have some numbers to look at. Um, in terms of uh, the goalkeeper, we are take, asking him to take shorter kicks, counter press, counter and distribute to fullbacks. However, there is also no play out of defense. So occasionally, 
the sweeper keeper is going to be making those long passes. He's going to do those uh, long passes from the back when he has the opportunity. Uh, we are playing him as a sweeper keeper on attack. Now, up top, we've got shorter passing, extremely high tempo with two underlaps, a fairly narrow attacking width and run at defense. Now, why have we done all this? The reason why we have underlaps is for the fullbacks. Now, there are two ways we can get inside running fullbacks in the game football manager. The first way, of course, is to use the inverted wingback. Now, the inverted wingback on attack will attack the center and he will drift up, right? So he's going to attack the middle. Problem is when we have two wingers. When we have two wingers, they actually sit and hold their position before running. That's not what Calabria or Theo Hernandez do. Uh, that would be more akin to how Guardiola sets up his, his uh, inverted wingbacks. Here, we don't have a choice. Um, we could play them as complete wingbacks, but then they will go down the flanks. So the only role in the game that allows us to get them to sit narrower, which is what we want, and to attack the inside is the fullback. So if you wanted to get them to sit narrow and cut inside, then you would have to choose the fullback on attack duty, add dribble more and take more risks to their play instructions, which is what I've done for both Hernandez and Calabria. Our double pivot will be played on support duties because we don't want to have a situation where one drops too deep. Now, there are times when they actually drop and form a three and then these guys are even higher up the pitch. Issue then on Football Manager to get that really high up the pitch. We either play them as wingbacks or again, we use the underlap, left, underlap, right. Now, the reason why I have the underlaps on is to encourage these players out, out in the wider positions to hold the ball up, allowing the fullbacks to attack the middle. Now, if I play Rafael Liao as a wide target man, he immediately gets a partnership when you start the game. So we have him playing as a wide target man and we've told him to stay wider. By getting him to stay wider, we are going to encourage uh, space to open up for Hernandez to make those inside runs. He will, he will just attack the middle. The same applies to Calabria. But remember, Calabria has the trait, hugs the line. So occasionally, he will go wide as well. We've told uh, the deep line playmaker to stay a bit wider because occasionally he does drift in that direction. We've told um, the box-to-box -box midfielder to move into the channels. This is going to encourage Tonali when he plays in this position to actually attack the pitch and he does get in amongst the goal scorers, which is what I really wanted because Tonali does score goals and he comes from deeper positions to do this. Uh, out on the right, we've got uh, sailor makers, I've told him to shoot less often. Now in the middle, we've got Diaz. Again, I wanted some of that vertical movement to, from this tactic. Since we've got so many on support duties and no one really attacking the box, uh, I wanted to create movement in the final third. This is a bit of a difference between how they play in real life. I mean, it is to make this tactic score goals. Uh, with Giroud dropping deep, dribble less, shoot less often and park tighter. Now, with all the pressing that's going on in the final third, this system is actually going to be quite fluid when he moves up in attack, which does encourage these wingbacks or rather these fullbacks to attack the central areas of the pitch. There are probably going to be quite a number of you out there who don't agree with the, what I've done. But here, this is me trying to get Calabria and Hernandez to be the stars of this tactic. Their inside runs, I need them to pull them off. I need to see the goals distributed across the team. So this is why I've taken this approach. So if I'm looking at the results, um, Champions League, we weren't too successful. Yeah, Echo, real life. And then uh, in terms of the league itself, Plenty of decent wins. I mean, narrow wins over top opposition like uh, Napoli, Juventus, Roma withdrew. Uh, I've tried to get the same kind of feeling when I'm playing against the top sides. We do well against the top sides like Inter. Uh, we slip up against some of the smaller sides, you know, dropping points against Bologna. Um, so I kind of like what we've got going here at the moment, right? We haven't done that badly in terms of our results. Now, if I'm looking at our goal difference... We've got a goal difference of 54. I'm a bit disappointed that we scored so many goals. When have you heard that from a player who's playing this game? I haven't, I've scored too many goals. Uh, in terms of our goals, well, Giroud has scored 23 goals out of 44 appearances. He scored something like 11 this season or two. So this is a very high output for the uh, player. Uh, there, Rafael Liao with 19 goals out of 44 appearances. Tonali with 13 goals coming in from midfield. Uh, we got Sailor Makers, the winger, with 11 goals. Brahim Diaz, the AMC, with 9 goals. Uh, Theo Hernandez uh, with 5 goals. 
the thing here about Theo Hernandez, I think some of these goals have actually come from penalties, right? So in terms of penalties, he scored two goals from penalties and the rest were from open play. Now, in terms of his dribbles per game, that's 4.06 dribbles a game. We've achieved that. So I'm pretty happy with the number of dribbles he's been pulling off this season. Uh, and then if I go down the list, we've got Frank Essie chipping it with goals. So we've created a system where a lot of players are chipping in with goals, right? If I'm looking at my data hub, the shot comes in because this is a pretty good split for a 4-2-3-1. A 2.38 expected goals versus 0 0.83. For a 4 2 3 1. This outperforms a lot of tactics. Like the 4 3 3 DM is close to these kind of numbers, but this is a 4 2 3 1 where you usually get something like expected goals of about two versus uh, expected goals against about one. So this is a very good number for this tactic. So, what we're going to do next is play through some of the games and look at some of these transitions in play. Our set pieces are default. I have not changed any of the set pieces. So, probably my suggestion would be to go do your own set pieces. You'll probably get nice numbers. Uh, Cassie out to Liao. Liao holds up the ball for Cassie. Now we can see the first indication of Theo Hernandez making his run. Can you, have you noticed where he's gone? He's gone from inside his position and he's running off into the middle, taking joining the attacking line, which is something I wanted to see. That Theo Hernandez is not out on the flanks. Giroud is here. Theo Hernandez has made his darting run inside. He holds on to the ball. Liao picks up the ball. And he's going to check his run. No, he does a cross to Sailor Makers and Tonali is inside the box. Check. We've got one of those transitions we wanted. we got Falcone with a goal kick. Our defensive line is well set up. Cassie is dropped deep uh, to help recycle possession of the ball. Theo Hernandez out wide. Takes on a few players. Now goes down the flanks. Gets inside the box. Giroud with the hitter. Okay, Giroud. This is a quick counter attack. Liao plays out to the winger who has come on for Sailor Makers. Sailor... This is a sip. Yeah, this attacking transition is also very common. Right, Cassie inside the box. Liao Hernandez, Messiah scores the goal. I like this because um, in real life, they sometimes when they attack, they only have three players attacking. And this is pretty close to what I wanted to see. Theo Hernandez comes inside. Uh, Rafael holds up. Rafael Liao holds up the ball. Cassie inside the area. Yeah, these are... I sometimes see AC Milan with a similar situation. Cassie's on the left. He's near the edge of the area. He wants to take a shot. So Messias comes on and he scores the goal. Tonali with the free kick. So far at the moment, right? Okay, there's something that I am not getting, right? The goalkeeper has uh, pretty good passing numbers. So I'm going to remove all this and uncheck everything and see what happens with the goalkeeper. <laughs> I mean, now we're going to the land of making the super keeper hoof the ball up. Mike Mannigan now has the ball at his, in his hand. So what is he going to do with this? He kicks it long straight away, finds Liao. He hits the ball on looking for Giroud. Now, we can definitely get that happening quite a lot if he plays as a sweeper keeper without any instructions. Then he's always going to look for an attacking opportunity. Um, the thing here is um, whether you want to do that. All right. So if you wanted it to be true to form you probably be looking at giving the keeper like this plenty of instructions but then in the game of football manager a sweeper keeper is almost always going to kick the ball long the first time so it's certainly an option to consider when you're playing the game then you'll get him kicking playing these longer range passes uh, that is a feature of his game now if he wanted more inside runs from the fullbacks, it is very possible. We can use the same base tactic and just change a couple of roles. Now, we can't have anybody in this area as a MC because the moment one of these guys is an MC, if we play an inverted wing back, these guys are going to come in here. They're going to sit and they hold their position. Even if they're on attack duty, occasionally they will sit. We don't want that because if they get the ball, sometimes what they do is they play one over the top. We need them to take on players to, do, to have that effect. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drop both these players into the DM slot. Now, we'll turn this guy into a Segundo Volante on attack and we'll turn him into a roaming playmaker so he covers more ground. Now, we can go here. We can add uh, the inverted wing back on attack as a role in duty for these two players. We now get the effect that we are after, which is when they get the ball, they run through the middle, but they don't sit because now they have uh, cut inside with the ball and sit narrower in their play instructions. Next, what we want to do is we want to look at our keeper because we've gotten a nice tactic that works and gives us some good numbers. But we want to do a bit of mic magic, which is to kick the ball. So here we're getting to distribute to the target man, counter, counter, press, and that's it. I mean, of course, if you want, you can also choose the other option, which is 
Tell him not to do anything. He's already a super keeper on the tank. Let him make his own decisions as to what to do. That is That can also work. That's the option we're going to take. The question at the end of the day is, is this better than the original 4231? In my honest opinion, it makes the system more defensive. It's going to affect our press. And between the two, I don't like it. Um, it does make those inverter wingbacks more proactive at attacking central areas of the pitch, but it comes at the cost of affecting our forward press. So you need to watch the transitions to understand what I mean. So here we go. Let's kick off our game against Inter Milan. We are playing in the Italian Cup. So we're going to play this for a short while as this tactic, and then we'll change it around to see the differences in the two tactics and how it impacts the transitions. So the ball is away. Uh, Vidal out to Bastoni. Now the press so far off kickoff seems fine because the players are actually closer together. Calabria gets the ball to Mori. You know, most of the time we are in our third having to defend. Vidal plays it back to the reach. You can see how high up the pitch this back five system is right now. They get the ball to Brozovic. He cracks a shot um, and hits the woodwork. So we've got a throw now, Theo Hernandez to Rafael. Liao plays it back to Theo. He comes inside. Giroud, Theo. Tonali shoots his block. Uh, there's plenty of uh, congestion in the center. Tonali, they, we lose the ball. Um, the press is definitely affected. We've only got these two. The, the midfielders are too deep to engage the press. Remagnoli, Cassie to Tonali. Tonali is deep. Calabria, now we see the inside run that's happening. Calabria is inside the box. It's, it will happen because with inverted wing back set up like this, they always run centrally and, it's, and it does look nice. They go back to defend. Bastoni, the press. You can see Cassie and Liao. They're all in the center in terms of the press. We're not putting a lot of pressure right now on the players. Uh, the reach brings the ball forward. And the central midfielders don't engage the press. This is the difference between a flat 4 2 three, one and one that has got two DMs. Do okay, I guess. Yeah, here we are having to defend DiMarco. Drops in across Giroud out to the AM attacking midfielder, brings the ball forward and then loses the ball. Okay, goalkeeper goes long. Zico with the header. Uh, defenders, Ron McNally can't get there. Dumfries and the opposition have scored the first goal. All right, I, I've seen enough. What I want to do is I want to change it back to the 4 2 3 1 that we had originally. Load um, my original tactic. So we're going to play with the same setup. Um, but the keeper, we're going to actually tell him to distribute the target, man. Picks up the ball. Okay, what is he going to do? He's going to kick it. <laughs> so he kicks it long. Uh, Sailor Makers gets away into the area. Shoots. Jiru shoot. Ah, Jiru can't find the back of the net. Outside the area, we got Tonali with a free kick. He puts it wide. And unfortunately for us, Inter Milan walk away with a cup. Okay, so, conclusion, play a four, flat 4-2-3-1 four, if you want to achieve their press. If you play with a double D to go for the inverted wingback runs, that means the inside runs of those fullbacks, you're not going to get the press working as well as you want it to. Final match, and I'm pretty certain this is the way I would set it up. Probably Giroud and Junior Messias. I would probably swap between these two for a striker. I mean, he can play as a deep line forward. So we got Tonali with the free kick. Oh, Sailor Makers uh, scores. Uh, this could be offside though. Um, nope, it is given. All right, we've taken the first lead against Torino. Let's look out for some of the other transitions. Now, here we go. 19 Theo Hernandez is quite high up. This is exactly what we want to see. We've got a deep line playmaker. He's moving a bit wide to support play on this side of the pitch. Rafael Iwiop wins the ball. Theo Hernandez, Romagnoli, Cassie. Rafael Yelial, Krunic, Messias. He holds up the ball. Theo and is actually wide this time. Finds Liao is inside the box. Wins us our penalty. Okay, it's not too bad. All right, 19 minutes in. I'm not too unhappy with the way we're looking. As you can see, uh, Theo and is high up the pitch. We get the lopsided effect I was after. Um, and we've beaten uh, Torino. In real life, they won 26 games and lost 4 matches. We were close. Won 28, lost 3. But we scored more goals than them. They allowed 31 goals. We allowed 32 goals. So in terms of a simulation, we're not that far away. We're just as leaky as they are in terms of how many goals they conceded. Uh, goal difference was 57. That's largely down to the fact that we scored more goals. So overall, statistically, 
I'm not too unhappy. Right, in terms of our uh, XG, it's still expectables 2.36, 0.86 uh, against per game. So it's not that bad. The tactic isn't going to be very different. It's going to be the same I'm going to upload. Uh, shoot less often, mark tighter in front. Uh, shoot less often and then stay wider for him. Roam from position for the AMC. Sometimes you might find yourself under a lot of pressure. So I've got to play out a defense. Um, there are going to be times where you might want to take this up. But we are playing with a sweeper keeper on attack. So if you're under pressure, what the keeper is going to do is he's going to kick the ball. And we've got, if you play Giroud and Liao, that could be an option because he's just going to kick it and he's going to kick it in their direction most of the time. This is best that I could come up with in terms of getting those fullbacks into the attacking positions. And while um, people might want to see a closer replication, there are certain limits to the match engine. There are certain things we can do and we can't do. And naturally, I leave that up to you because I've given you options as well. You want to play them as inverted wingbacks, you can. But if you want to do that press, you're going to have to push that line all the way to the top, right? The defensive line. And sometimes that is very, very risky in the game of football manager. So I've given, I've tried to find a compromise, get a bit of solidity and given you other options like fullbacks on attack. Now, if you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you found it useful. And if you're great EC Milan fans, well, congratulations on winning the title. Let's hope you do it again next season and add some depth to your squad because that's what AC Milan needs moving forward if they want to be a force in the Champions League. Meanwhile, you guys stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.